new area that uh, we've gotten into in this past year is uh, computer forensics and cell phone forensics where uh, we'll, we'll uh, seize a computer for evidence or uh, we take uh, cell phones for evidence and especially off of uh, for narcotics investigations uh, we can now download um, the uh, contact list out of a cell phone and the text messages out of a cell phone and we get those contacts when we're working narcotics investigations and, and that has been a real boost uh, to help us solving crimes and, and reducing crimes. Our police department tries very hard to keep us safe using technology. The force has closed the gap between criminals and their abilities to hide their activities. Let's say we get a case, um, we go in, we do a search warrant, we recover a suspect's computer. I bring the computer down or whatever department is recovering the computer, they'll bring the computer down to me, I'll break the computer down, I'll pull the hard drive out of the computer. You take the hard drive then, you do a, an exact duplicate image of the hard drive, which takes everything from that hard drive and just copies it exactly onto a separate hard drive, and we work off of that hard drive. So that way the suspect's hard drive is not even touched. From there we download it into a software that we use and it does a search through the hard drive. It separates everything into separate folders such as emails, chats, uh, photos, things of that nature. And then from there it's just basically a sorting issue where you go in and you go through and you look for all your evidence that's pertaining to that particular case and you separate it into a separate area and then you present a um, a case log in reference to your your uh, uh, evidence that you collect from that, that hard drive. We all realize the conveniences this digital age affords those who wish to partake. Macs and PCs are a minute part of the digital technology available to all of us, including criminals. Computer forensics is basically, it's, it's not necessarily even computer forensics anymore, it's more of a digital forensics now. Digital forensics is a wide variety of things. So you've got the uh, your GPS systems, your phones, you've got computers, you've got now you've got these iPads and things of that nature. So the term computer forensics has kind of gone by the wayside. Now it's more of a digital forensics field. We're actually using cell phones and getting a lot more cell phones than we do even computers because cell phones do everything that a computer does and they're so handy and they're so easy to carry and they're used widely by all types of people and all types of uh, criminal activity. Basically, when we get a cell phone, we get the cell phone, we bring it in, and we hook it up into our cell phone forensic software and hardware. And what it does is it will download everything that's in that cell phone, and it will dump it into this hardware system that we have. And in turn, the hardware system will send it into our software, which is in our computer system, and it will do pretty much the same thing that the computer forensics does. It sorts through everything, all the folders and everything that's within that cell phone. Um, once that's done, it lays it out into, a, uh, into separate folders and at that time we go through those folders, we're able to search for our evidence. It's almost exactly like the computer forensics setup, except with cell phones you're working with a smaller memory base than what you do on a full-size computer. So it don't take quite as long. Um, we have recently purchased a new software for our current computer or cell phone forensics tool and that software is going to enable us to be able to pull deleted text messages, deleted photos, um, deleted chats, things of that nature off of cell phones that we couldn't get otherwise once they've been deleted. So it's going to be a handy tool. It's also going to be able to bypass any passwords that are put on cell phones for protection. By using technology to limit the abilities for lawbreakers, our police department has found the Digital Forensics Laboratory assists in finding the truth for convictions and establishing innocence. Recently we had a case in which uh, you know, we got word that a person had, was looking at child pornography and it was a, a, a person came in you know, that didn't, that wanted to remain anonymous and advised that they saw all this stuff. We were able to obtain the computer and we searched the computer and of course we found that in fact he was looking at child pornography and we were able to put, you know, file charges on him in reference to that. 
Um, not only though does the cell phone case or cell phone forensics and the computer forensics work well with uh, showing evidence of criminal activity and helping with the charges of, of criminals, but at the same time we have able we've been able to use the cell phone forensics and computer forensics system to also clear people that have had charges put against them. So you know here recently. Um, it, it was another agency, an outside agency, brought me a cell phone, and they advised that uh, a lady came in and was claiming that she was uh, sexually molested by an individual. Well, of course, the individual had certain things on his cell phone that were able to prove otherwise. So we were able to actually show his innocence and show that the lady was making a false police report. So it's good to work both ways. You know, ultimately, we want to come to the truth of the situation, the truth of the case. And with this technology, it really assists us with doing that. Our police department tries to stay on the cutting edge of technology in crime fighting. Common procedure throughout the state is to forward all digital forensics work to the OSBI, creating backlogs and a waiting period upwards of six months. Now, the Shawnee PD exhibits positive leadership to other agencies by making the digital forensics laboratory in our town available to surrounding law enforcement. We understand the downfalls that all these smaller agencies are dealing with because the whole reason why this got started is because of our issues with the time constraints with OSBI and everything else. So we offer this to other surrounding agencies for us to be able to do so we can get them their evidence back quicker than what they'd otherwise be able to do. You know, it all trickles up as well, I mean, to to OSBI, we're helping them with their caseload. Instead of all these surrounding agencies here sending it to them, they're sending it to us so we can assist them and OSBI can uh, hopefully lower their caseload a little bit.